So let's begin now with our opening hymn. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. It's wonderful that so, there are so many of us here uh, this morning, which is what we expected, because um, Molly was such a dear friend to so many of us. And I'd like to begin by offering our very deep sympathy to Joanna, to Lee, and to Sally, and the family. We support you with our prayers, um, particularly at this time. But Molly would want um, her Requiem Mass um, to be a celebration of thanksgiving and joy. She'd want us all to be very happy. And we're here to give thanks to God for a very long and very rich life. And so that's something to celebrate. But we begin by just pausing for a few moments to acknowledge that we all fail at times, we're all sinners, and we all need to trust in God's mercy and his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You opened for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Molly, 
whom you have called to journey to you, and since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland, to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit for ever and ever. I'd just like to point out that the readings, as well as the hymns and the music, have been specially chosen by Molly. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to, apologies, to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. The word of the Lord. The response of the psalm is, I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? There is one thing I ask of the Lord. This, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. O oh Lord, hear my voice when I call, have mercy and answer. It is your face, O oh Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him. Hold firm. Take heart. Hope in the Lord. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Could you kindly stand, please? Alleluia, alleluia. It is my Father's will, says the Lord, that whoever believes in the Son shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, 
you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So that, alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. Today, um, we, the many friends and family, of Molly, gather to give thanks to God for her long and very full and very rich life. As you know, she died just short of her 99th birthday. In Molly's own words, compared with many people, my life has followed many different and numerous paths and I can almost say, been there, done that. Even so, I think a good sum up will be the realization that for the most part, it has been a life of somewhat missed opportunities and missed paths. But that's life, isn't it? and one is supposed to learn and benefit from these adverse mistakes or happenings. I think only a very humble person would write that. Most of us would probably say that Molly made good use of the many opportunities that came her way. She certainly had a very interesting and very varied life. Her early years in the Navy, during the war, Molly had been in the, in the Rens, the Women's Royal Naval Service. Later, as the wife of a diplomat, she traveled widely, mainly in the Far East, where she would have met many well-known people. G.K. Chesterton is supposed to have said that there's nothing like travel for narrowing the mind. I'm sure we'd agree that's not the case for Molly. But travel, I think, is what the Lord would want us to reflect on today. Because underneath all the, or could you say underneath all running through, all her activities, her meetings with different people, her long and very active life was the most important journey of all, a journey which we all have to make, the journey of faith. My information has come mainly from the book which Molly wrote about herself, intended for her near family and not for the general public. It goes under the, I think, excellent title, um, Smiles and Tears of an Unfinished Journey. I should begin by stating that Molly's family have always been a vital part of that journey. She has drawn enormous strength and joy from their love and support, as I'm sure Joanna, Lee and Sally would, would say the same about their mother. Molly writes in her book, 
I've always believed in God, but my whole religious state was typical of most women of my age. It came and went in waves. But I needed to find a way to God that was more than just the habit of church on Sundays. I wanted more than anything to commit to one that had authority and not just appear at a service because the vicar or priest was good at sermons or go because the church was a pretty one. And she puts an exclamation mark after that. I needed not only an anchor, but a goal that was to test and eventually satisfy my inner being, my soul. I wanted to equate that with the process of living, but living more fully through trying to be the person he wanted me to be, was born to be, rather than continue to drift through life. Molly's quest eventually led her to the Jesuits, where, like so many others, including um, my parents, she was to receive instructions. Over a period of about a year, she met regularly with a kind elderly Jesuit priest. In her own words, I had a lifetime of questions for him. But one day, he did a minor thump on the table and told me, no more questions, no more books, just concentrate on prayer. Molly has never regretted becoming a Catholic, but as the title of her, of her book suggests, she still had many miles to travel. We have benefited greatly from her having been part, from us being part of that journey. She has been a very active and prayerful member of our parish, which she would regard very much as her second family, her second home. But there are people here who would know far more than I do about her commitment to our communities, um, both here and in Bosom always very supportive, enormously appreciative, and very generous, very generous to us clergy, perhaps in particular. And we will miss that large fruit cake which used to appear before Christmas. Both um, Father Sebastian and Father Peter would be here today, but they're on the clergy retreat at Wanish. At the heart of Molly's faith was her deep personal love for the Lord. She had a great love for the Eucharist and would always try to come to daily Mass, latterly travelling at a pace on her buggy. <laughs> Being a good Catholic, She'd want us to keep her very much in her prayers. She would never be so presumptuous as to assume that she's immediately gone straight to heaven. No, she'd want us to, to pray for her on that last bit of her journey. She will certainly be remembering us. However, I'm sure you'd agree it is hard to believe that God is not pleased to welcome home someone who has loved him so much over so many years and has shown so much kindness and love to others. But we must let her have the last word. She writes, I'm glad and thankful to have lived in the times I've lived in. And yes, I have many wrinkles of both age and life, but laughter lines too. 
Hence the title of my journal, Smiles and Tears of an Unfinished Journey. A journey eventually leading to yet another journey. Well, I'm sure that final journey will be very short. And the Lord is waiting to welcome her into her true home, where one day we pray we'll all be reunited with Molly, with all our loved ones who have gone before us. May she rest in peace. I invite everyone to stand for the prayers of the faithful. And so as the family of God, confident that our God loves us and cares for us, we now place our needs before him. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. For Molly, that the Lord will welcome her into his kingdom. May she have the joy of being reunited with her many friends who have gone before her. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Joanna, Lee and Sally, and for all the bereaved, that they may find comfort and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may see life as a journey and recognise we are all pilgrims coming home to God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our world and its leaders, that they will work together to eradicate poverty and war and to ensure that the world is a safer place. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In silence, we pray for our own intentions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us now turn to Mary, who became our mother at the foot of the cross. Hail Mary. Full Full of of grace, grace, the Lord Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy own Jesus. Holy Holy Mary, Mary, Mother Mother of God, pray pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Almighty God and loving Father, with great confidence we place these and our many unspoken prayers before you, knowing that you will grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our Mass proceeds with the offertory and our hymn.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Molly, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we, who have been redeemed by the death of your Son, shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your, of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We offer the third Eucharistic prayer. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Molly, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this may leave the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those of you who are not able to receive Holy Communion with us, um, I warmly invite you to come forward for a blessing if you remember to cross your arms and bow your head. And first I'll give Communion out on this side, then in the centre.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Molly may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Just once again, it's wonderful that so many people have been able to join us uh, this morning. Again, a sign of how much Molly means to all of us. It was her express wish um, that afterwards, after the final commendation, as many people as possible um, go into the Lurpage Le room for refreshments. She doesn't she does want any of us to go to the crematorium because as far as Molly is concerned, this is the liturgy, the funeral liturgies, the Requiem Mass. So, um, and she wants us to, to celebrate. So I'm sure you, you'll join us afterwards. And once again, we thank God for Molly, for her life, for a wonderful witness, witness of her faith and her kindness and um, her friendship. And we continue to keep her very much in our prayers as we know she will be praying for us, as we, each one of us, continue on our own journey of faith. So before we go our separate ways, let us now take leave of our sister. May our family express our our affection for her, may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Molly in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Molly in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness 
and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us now take the body of our sister to its place of rest.